What makes Japanese DNA feel so singular, so unmistakably itself? Behind the aesthetics we know, samurai epics, cherry blossoms, sushi craft, lies a genetic tapestry woven from deep time hunter gatherers, rice farming migrants, and even traces from now extinct humans like Neanderthals and Denisovans. In that tapestry, the Jomen set the first threads, the Yayoi repatterned the loom with agriculture and metalwork, and a later continental influx during the Kofun era helped lock in the shape of the modern genome. Together, these threads form one of human evolution's most intriguing case studies. For decades, scholars framed Japan's ancestry with the dual structure model, a blend of indigenous Jomon and incoming Yayoi farmers. Recent genome-wide breakthroughs refined that picture into a tripartite origin, adding a third component linked to Northeast Asia that arrived around the state-forming Kofun period. The result is not a simple handoff from one people to another, but a long conversation among populations, sometimes isolated by seas and climate, sometimes stirred by migration and exchange. Why does this matter now? Because those ancient layers still touch modern life. They help explain regional differences across the archipelago, illuminate why certain traits or health risks cluster the way they do, and power a new era of precision medicine in Japan. Think genome-guided screening, prevention, and treatment. In other words, the story in our genes is not only about the past, it is a map for better decisions today. For much of the late 20th century, Japan's population history was framed by a simple idea, the dual structure model. In this view, modern Japanese emerged primarily from two sources, indigenous Jomon hunter-gatherers and later Yayoi rice farmers who crossed from the continent roughly 2,300 years ago. Begin with the Jomon, whose ancestors reached the islands in the late Upper Paleolithic and flourished after sea levels rose approximately 17 to 16,000 years ago, turning Japan into a string of natural laboratories. In isolation, small communities experimented with subsistence strategies, fishing, shellfish gathering, hunting, and produced some of the earliest pottery on Earth. Traces of this Jomon foundation are unevenly distributed today. Ryukyu Islanders, e.g. Okinawa, and Ainu communities in the north preserve higher proportions of Jomon ancestry than most of Honshu, an echo of geography's gatekeeping role. When you encounter discussions of distinctive features in parts of Japan, biological or cultural, this is the deep layer showing through. Around 300 BCE, a new chapter opened as the Yayoi arrived with paddy rice agriculture, metalworking, and hydraulic know-how. Agriculture reshaped daily life. Settlements expanded, diets shifted toward carbohydrates, and population density rose. Genetic markers associated with continental East Asia, including Y-chromosome O lineages, increased in frequency, and other small traits began to map migration on the body. Think synodont, shovel-shaped, incisors becoming more common, or the ABC11 earwax variant linked to dry earwax spreading from Kyushu, consistent with a Yayoi entry point. Was this a replacement or a remix? The genome answer is clear, remix. The Yayoi did not erase the Jomon. They had mixed with them, with the balance varying by region. Mainland cores of agriculture show stronger Yayoi continental signal, Peripheral and more isolated regions retain more of the Jomon palette. The result is a mosaic rather than a monolith. Centuries later, during the Kofun era, roughly 3rd to 6th centuries CE, vast keyhole-shaped mounded tombs dotted the landscape as the Yamato polity consolidated. Archaeology records intense links with Korea and China, bronze mirrors, iron, Chinese inscribed swords, and even entire settlements introduced from the southern Korean peninsula. 
genomes from Kofun period individuals reveal a stronger East Asian wide component than in Yayoi. And strikingly, those Kofun genomes sit very close to present day Japanese in genetic space. In other words, much of the architecture we see today was already in place by Kofun times. If Jomen is the deep layer, the Ainu are its living memory. Genetic studies consistently place Ainu close to Jomen derived lineages. Y-DNA-D1B and M-T-DNA-N-9B-M-7A among them, with limited additional inputs likely connected to Okhotsk-related groups. Geography made Hokkaido a refuge where older worldviews endured, a nature-centered cosmology of Kamui, spiritual presences in animals, plants, and places, ceremonies like Ayomante, the bear ritual, and an artistic lexicon of Atis textiles and carved Ayupopasui prayer sticks and Inal ritual wands. Linguistically, Ainu is a language isolate, a reminder that unwritten histories can be as deep as genetic ones. That heritage, however, was battered by the Meiji state's project of national homogenization. The 1899 Protection Act policed culture rather than protected it, restricting hunting rights, banning the mother tongue in schools, imposing Japanese names, and, critically, expropriating land. Poverty and disease followed. Only in 2008 did the Japanese government officially recognize the Ainu as an indigenous people. Today, Community initiatives and public programs work to revive language and ritual, but the number of fluent speakers is dangerously low. The Ainu story is thus both a scientific window onto Jomon ancestry and a moral lens on cultural rights. Ancient movements leave marks that are surprisingly tangible. Teeth. The synodont sundodont contrast is a classic anthropological marker. Synodont, shovel-shaped, Incisors are common across Northeast Asia and in most of Japan. Sundadant, non-shovel patterns are more frequent in Southeast Asia. The persistence of Sundadant traits in Okinawa and parts of Hokkaido suggests older Southern inputs that predate or were diluted by later Northern waves. Earwax, ABCC11. A single gene helps map migration, the G allele of ABCC11 leads to dry earwax and is common in continental East Asia. The A allele produces wet earwax and is more frequent in older layers like the Jomon. Surveys within Japan align with the southwestern Akyushu spread during Yayoi times. Immune and serum markers, GM slash HLA, suites of GM and HLA, Variants lean toward a northern profile in modern Japanese, consistent with inputs from Baikal slash Siberia, corridors in later Northeast Asian contacts, archaic introgression. Like other non-African populations, Japanese carry Neanderthal segments. East Asians, including Japanese, also carry Denisovan traces, though at lower levels than some Oceanian groups. Some archaic segments sway modern health e.g. Neanderthal variants influencing autoimmune risk or stature, and a Denisovan-tagged region near NKX61 implicated in glucose metabolism. These are reminders that ancient admixture still whispers in today's clinics. Because Japan's genetic history involves layered founders and regional heterogeneity, it is an ideal proving ground for precision medicine. The jewel resource Japanese Encyclopedia of Whole Genome Slash Exome Sequencing Library aggregates genomic and clinical data from approximately 3,200 individuals, helping researchers pinpoint variants that alter blood pressure, kidney and cardiovascular risks, and drug response. The lesson is twofold. One, population-specific risk. Variants with modest global effects can loom large in a particular ancestry context. Screening and prevention work better when tuned to local allele frequencies. 2. Pharmacogenomics Response to therapies, including agents used in type 2 diabetes care, can vary with ancestry-linked genetics. Knowing a patient's genotype guides the right drug at the right dose, 
reducing trial and error. In short, learning the Japanese genome's backstory helps everyone. Population genetics thrives on nuance, so a few myths deserve gentle retirement. Japan is genetically uniform. Not so. The archipelago shows structured diversity. Okinawa and Hokkaido carry more Jomon signal. Central or Western Honshu show stronger continental inputs tied to Yayoi and Kofun waves. Everything is Jomon plus Yayoi, full stop. That pair explains a lot, but evidence for a Kofun era, or broadly post-Yayoi, continental boost is strong. What changed in Kofun was not only palace walls and ritual, but the ancestry mix. Ainu look European, so they must be related. Superficial resemblance arises from convergent adaptation to cold. Similar pressures, not direct shared ancestry with Europeans. Genetically, Ainu align with Jomon-derived variation. Genes alone explain body form. Body shape is gene times environment. Climate, altitude, sunlight, and diet leave marks. A seafood-heavy Jomon menu selects different metabolic tweaks than a rice-dominant Yayoi one. North-South climate bands tug on thermal regulation and pigmentation pathways. Genes are not the only record of movement. Language, too, maps contact and renovation. A leading scenario ties Proto-Japonic to Yayoi-era migration, later splitting into Ryukyuan and Japanese branches. Lacking a native script, early elites adapted classical Chinese in Kanban style. Scribes eventually repurposed characters for sounds, manyogana, then distilled them into kana syllabaries, hiragana, grammar and native words, and katakana, loan words and emphasis. This is the linguistic mirror of the genetic story. Import, adapt, integrate. Contacts with Korea and China layered further influences, political vocabulary, Buddhist and Confucian registers, technical terms, without erasing the underlying grammar. As with ancestry, the endpoint was not mimicry, but transformation, a Japanese system that remembers its loans while sounding unmistakably like itself. Pull back now and the pattern resolves. Jomon supplies the deep stratum, insular, small, drift-shaped, and still discernible in modern genomes, especially in the North and South archipelagos. Yayoi adds mass and momentum, agriculture, metal, higher density, and a continental genetic signal that mixes rather than replaces. Kofun consolidates power in re-weights ancestry, larger continental inflows, and tighter political hierarchies producing genomes that already resemble today's. Across it all, geography alternately separates and connects, while culture absorbs and refashions. This is why Japanese DNA is so instructive. It shows how migration and local continuity can coexist, how small, isolated communities preserve ancient lineages even as new waves crest over them, how diet and climate sculpt the genome, and how the past keeps shaping present-day health. This matters beyond curiosity. The same signatures that archived ancient journeys now inform precision medicine. Who faces heightened risk for certain conditions? Which therapies may work best? Where screening should begin earlier? Japan's investment in resources like Juul points toward care that is more anticipatory and more personal. Care that recognizes how ancestry context and environment co-author health. There is also an ethical horizon. The Ainu remind us that genetic insight without cultural respect is incomplete. Survival is not victory if memory disappears. Reviving languages, honoring ceremonies, and protecting land are not add-ons to science. They are the conditions that let knowledge be humane. In this sense, the Genomes Archive asks us to widen our circle of responsibility to people, to place, and to time. What then should we, do we carry forward? First, humility. Percentages are model dependent. New ancient DNA can redraw our maps. Second, imagination. Integrate archeology, span linguistics, and genomics to test bolder, kinder hypotheses. 
Third, commitment. Build inclusive data sets so the benefits of discovery reach everyone. If this journey has done its work, you now hold a three-layer lens for reading Japan's past and perhaps your own. Migration and continuity can coexist. Difference and kinship can fit in the same frame. And the next chapter is ours to write with better data, better care, and a deeper regard for the communities whose lives make science possible. If this perspective resonated, stay with us. Like, subscribe, and tell us what you want to explore next. The Atlas of the Genome still has pages to turn,